here we are valley trail riders family enduro 2019 we are on 18 mile an hour lap average the second lap of two here today we start out with a little sand section we're ripping through here and i turn around here and realize Braden had hit the ground didn't get off to a good start here on lap two but Overall, he had a great ride for the day. He made up this time no problem on this 18 mile an hour lap average and had no issues averaging that speed over the course of the lap. So anybody that's watching this that's new to Family Enduro Series racing, a little bit different from the Sprint Enduro Series that we run where the Sprint Enduro is a time trial essentially where you run segments and they take your total cumulative time and the lowest person wins. This is based on an average. So lap one, you want to average 12 mile an hour pace and there's checkpoints set up randomly throughout this lap and you have no idea where they're going to be. So if you get a header behind your average pace, you get penalized points for being too far ahead or too far behind. Um, if you come in within your 60 second window that you're allotted, you get zero points. So throughout the day, low point, low point man wins essentially. So um, over lap one, I I picked up two points on the very first check, which kind of kind of kicked my butt for the day. It took me from what of, what would have been a second place finish in my division and resulted in a fifth place finish. I came in four seconds early on the very first check, came within the first mile of the loop, and I was I knew I was ahead of pace and wasn't really anticipating it, but uh, it caught me by surprise and it took me down. But here I am. These are uh, right in front of us here we had caught and uh, getting around them here, and I come up to this tight bend, and. Um, Little, little tighter than what I thought it was going to be, and I shoot out wide. Oh, almost hit that tree. So close, locked up the brakes, stalled the bike, pull it out, and go right behind me. Now I'm slowing them up, so it's the way it goes. No harm done. I'm on my way. Didn't hold them up too much, and back to racing. So both loops were the same on this course today. About the first five or five and a half miles were on Valley Trail Riders Club, their, their own ground. And then we jumped off their ground and rode two miles down the road to some private land and rode about an additional seven to eight miles for two 15 mile loops on this particular course. So the trail system here at Valley is really well established. They've run a lot of events here and as you can see this is pretty well beaten in but as we go on to the, the private landowners trail system that they have, a um, little, bit, little bit harder to follow. So we were using uh, green arrows today which here at Valley wasn't a problem because there's a well established trail. Um, we had about a dozen riders in front of us. We were row six and there was, I think there was I don't know, maybe 12 to 14 riders that went off in front of us in the first few rows. So being that early in the, the group, um, the trail wasn't that established once we got off of Valley's trail system. You're going to see a little bit later on. I missed a turn a couple different times on, on the private owner's land and uh, lose some time. But uh, right there, the trail went left and I kept going straight. I just wasn't paying close enough attention. Right about now, I'm realizing realizing that we're off. And I'm, I'm like yelling at my son, hey, I think we're off the trail, you seen the arrows? He's sitting there behind me and I can see the those other two riders in our group. That's my dad and the vintage rider that rode in our, 
our row with us and they're actually on the trail so I was like all right we're gonna turn back around go get back with them and uh, get back to where we need to be so here we gotta jump under this ribbon here so we don't cut it for anybody else so they don't do the same thing that we did and we are back on our way but at this point got some time to make up since we uh, probably lost 30 seconds there for sure with that little mishap just not paying attention close enough maybe I did I did hear a couple other riders did that exact same thing um, in that exact spot that I did too so maybe maybe there should have been a ribbon there to make that turn a little bit more obvious So now I'm, I'm coming back up on, on my dad. He's riding the 60 plus division. He actually finished second on the day with two, two points. So he had a great ride. And then um, Tim Gro, I believe is his name, on the 75 Husqvarna here riding the, riding the uh, vintage division. And he actually came out as the vintage winner for the day. So overall, we had a, we had a great day um, for our row. We had four riders in row six. We had a, a winner and two second place finishes, and I came away fifth in my 16 to 39 year old division. I had two extra points um, than anybody else on our group because I was the pace setter for the day, and I actually came in a few seconds early to one of the checks and got penalized two points for that, where the other riders in our group um, were right on time because they were a few seconds behind me. So. My mistake there. It's pretty awesome out here watching this 40 plus year old bike, 45 year plus old bike out here just ripping up these trails, just just along the lines of the new ones with no issues. So pretty pretty good testament to the bikes they built back those days. So we're coming up to a clearing here and they're gonna wave me by uh, so I can set the pace and keep the keep us on the 18 mile an hour average and I thought he was going to the right and he kind of moved over left as I was already made my call and or to go left and we almost clipped handlebars there so Pretty fortunate there to slip slip through there without any incident. But these trails today, um, perfect moisture in the ground. Really had some good bite, no dust. A um, couple couple of the low areas did have a little standing water the first first lap, first time through. But by the time we got back to it, second second time around, after the 120 plus riders had been through, all that water had been splashed out of the puddles, and it was just a little bit a little bit wet at that point but overall I mean great great conditions wasn't too hot I mean we were probably low 80s um, but when you're out there riding that you know you got a lot of shade from the, the woods and whatnot it felt great So a couple weeks from now, we've got the big granddaddy of them all for the Family Enduro Series, the Pinecone Enduro put on by Lansing Motorcycle Club. So if you guys are ever thought about coming to one of these events, I really encourage you to come out and try this one. Um, they do a great job with this event. It's always by far um, the largest of the year. Um, probably we'll have three, 400 riders I'm, I'm anticipating, I think, this event had about 120 so be considerably larger than this one a lot of good people out there and that's that's one thing that 
I've really taken to with this series is everybody's so friendly, willing to help you out. If you're not familiar with the timekeeping format, how that works, it's going to be somebody in your row that is familiar with it and that can help you out, give you the ins and outs of it. And if you're not interested in competing, just come out and, and ride a great trail system. It's a great day for that too. So um, hope hope to some of you guys that haven't tried this type of racing before can come out and give it a shot. I think you'll be be pleased. Back to my my chin mounted camera angle this week I had uh, my uh, mounting system actually broke that I was using on my chin so my last couple videos have been a head mounted GoPro which I really do not like to run for multiple reasons one you clip that camera on top of your helmet on overhanging tree branches and secondly I just don't like the angle as much you can't really see how the bikes moving the handlebar moving all the shock that you're taking as you're on the trail I think this gives a much better viewpoint of what you're actually seeing when you're on the bike out there, better perspective all around. slowing down here to check my mileage um, and the time to see where I was and it's about right on pace at this point so the, the, at the clip we were going we had made up that time that we had lost earlier and just have to basically keep those momentum um, until our checkpoint which I would have thought we would have had one already we're probably close to four and a half miles into the loop at this point without a check so at this time I'm thinking any time is going to be a check so I just kind of thinking internally it's going to maintain this 18 mile an hour pace and we should should be good to zero this check um, whenever it does does show up to bring my my daughter on her KTM 50 she's eight years old to one of these events this year and in hindsight I probably should have considered this one this was a trail that she could have definitely handled the majority of every of the obstacles here wasn't anything too treacherous any log crossings or anything and um, other than the sand at the very beginning and um, you know a little bit of those that mud in the puddles those little 50s don't do well in either of those with those small tires and those uh, the clutch system they have just doesn't work well in sand so um, 
we, we will get her to one this year for sure. She's been riding the, the Hair Scramble series and really enjoying that. And um, she, well, she wants to get out to one of these, but I'm just looking for the right one to introduce her to so that she has a good, good first experience. I think probably the, uh, the Greenville, Ohio, that's probably one I'm going to consider. Um, we rode that one last year, and it's train-wise probably one of the one of the calmer, um, less technical tracks that we've ridden. A lot of a lot of field riding there, so it's great for a first-time rider. So if you have a youngster out there that's a little bit inexperienced, that would definitely be a be one to consider to start them out on. So at this point, without there being a check, I'm starting to realize the check probably isn't until our reset period, which is at the five and a half mile mark. And we're about to be the point where the reset is, where we leave Valley's property. So um, I know the check's coming up here shortly. There's people who were waiting. I don't know if they were ahead of pace or what, what was going on there, but um, I knew that I was still on pace, but you always kind of second guess yourself as you go by somebody sitting there. Or am I ahead or, or are they off? So I don't know, maybe they were just out for a trail right day and we're, we're taking a little breather there. And here's our, our check. We've got Mr. Six Day himself doing the, doing the score log there. Thanks for helping out, Talon. I had sent my son to the FCA motocross camp at Battle Creek this year, and he had the opportunity to work with Talon a lot on the off-road sections, and it, it's amazing how much that really helped Braden's skill level and confidence level, um, just getting some instruction from a top-level rider like he is, and um, being able to pick his brain, and you know, just his fundamentals have gotten so much better just from that week-long camp, so definitely something I'm gonna look at sending him to again next year as well. So we're we're coming up to the parking area here of Valley, um, and this is this is where the reset was the first lap, and it's the same for this lap. So the riders waiting here um, just completed the first section. There's a little about a 10 minute break here before we go off to the private land. It gives the riders that are behind a little opportunity to catch up here. Thank you for keeping time. <laughs> well. I only checked it twice. I checked it at three miles and five miles. I was like, we're right on there, so. I was like, where's the check? Where's yeah, the check? I know. I was like, we've got to be getting close. Your son is a rider. So this is the first section of the the private land here that we were on off of Valley's Club course and uh, you're gonna see real soon here how this trail um, kind of just disappears in places and you can't really see other than the arrows now take into consideration this is after 120 riders have been through here on lap one the trail was vir vir virtually non-existent in some areas so it was it was difficult right here on lap one i kind of went off here in this area and uh was off for about 20 30 seconds trying to get back on and i came into this particular check about five seconds late lost a point just because i didn't see where the trail went i i zeroed um i zeroed the first two checks so far on this 18 mile an hour lap so i'm um, feeling pretty good on this lap i think i had um got three points on the first lap and uh, I actually end up with one point 
on this lap. I, uh, the last check, I stopped to wait um, for my son. I thought he, had, he thought he had fallen behind me, and I kind of turned around and waited for him for 30 seconds or so, just to make sure he was he was okay and was catching up. And I actually came into the final check about 10 seconds late, also, and I dropped a point there. But better better safe than sorry to know that he was he was there with us. As usual, a big thank you to the people that put this event on and the landowners that allowed us to ride on their land. Um, it's just nice to, to have people that do that and allow access to their land for us to ride. I know um, some of the landowners were at the event today and were riding along with us, so um, it's always it's, I'm always very grateful for that because there's not a lot of people that are willing to do that anymore. I kind of trained myself from lap one to really, really try to look out 100 yards out in front of me to see where these next arrows are so you know the general direction that you're going to be taking uh, to get there. But the, honestly, the second lap was so much better. The trail so much more established and easier to follow. Didn't really have any issues during this section. We did have some field um, crossings in this this second section here, and I'm gonna fast forward this video through there. It's just basically a straight shot down the edge of some corn fields and and bean fields, so you're not gonna miss much here when we decide to fast forward here momentarily. I stopped there and tried to see where I am mileage and, and time wise and still pretty much right on pace there so I didn't have to stop just keep on moving. Now we're back into the next wood lot here and we probably got another I don't know, mile and a half, two miles in this wood lot before we, we jump out to another field and jump over to the next wood lot so it's kind of what you get with, with private land. You get a little bit of diverse terrain, you get some woods, you get some fields, a little bit of everything.
I had to really be careful on this particular course because with all the open fields that we did have to ride, you could have easily gotten ahead of that 18 mile an hour average. A lot of times when you're just sole, solely you. woods riding, you're having a hard time hitting that 18 mile an hour average anyway. Um, but with this, the open fields, I mean, if you're ripping across here, you'd be way ahead of pace and drop a bunch of points. So I never tried to really go more than, more than 24, 25 miles an hour just because I knew um, if I did, we'd, we'd be way ahead of pace. I kind of lost some concentration there and missed my missed my mark going through that little section and that's all it takes and and you're off. Another cool thing about the Family Enduro Series is they don't require AMA and D14 memberships. So if you just haven't ever tried anything like this before and you wanted to give it a shot, um, you just show up. Uh, if you've got a minor, you just be the consenting adult. You have to be there to sign their waiver form, $20 entry fee, and uh, basically usually about a 30 to 35 mile trail ride for the day. So um, barrier to entry is really low very inviting for, for anyone to try.
couple sections here where I think I was starting to lose my concentration a little bit. I missed a couple arrows. This one here, I needed to go. Looks like the trail went to the right. I think people were going both directions all day, and that's part of the reason that I was off. I'm realizing I'm off, so as you can see, I'm not the first person to cut over right here and get back on the trail that we should be on with those arrows. about two minutes of video left um, my GoPro dies before the end of this lap but if you guys have any questions about the family enduro series or are interested in trying one out feel free to leave it in the comments and reach out to me and uh, you know if you enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up subscribe I, I'm posting all these family enduro series videos this year to our, our YouTube channel and um, along with some some hair scramble and uh, sprint enduro series that we're running as well so we're staying we're staying very busy this summer. Um, we're pretty much racing almost every weekend the rest of the, the rest of the year, well into the fall, uh, between those three series. So Michigan has a lot to offer as far as um, the off-road series racings go, and a uh, little little bit of something different that they each have to offer. So um, something something will fit your needs for sure. turn I overshot I didn't see the arrow going into the woods and there's set looked like several other people had taken that same path that I had gone to and had overshot as well but as this video comes to an end here we've got another 20 30 seconds of riding here in the video and then I'm gonna turn it over and a few of our still shots that we were able to capture for the day the awards the award ceremony my son Braden took second in his division in his 9 to 11 year old class so get to see a few shots of him um, receiving his award and just a couple others from the day that we were able to capture so again I hope you enjoyed the video if you ever see us at the track feel free to stop by and say hey until next time guys we'll see ya thanks for watching